hey, we're trying to make him stop, but he's a psycho that doesn't want to stop, and he's an ally, so we, you know, we can't slap him around. We're really sorry, but it's definitely not me, Nancy Pelosi, and me, Joe Biden, that are pushing this. It's our ally that is very strict and very radical on this particular topic, which is, you know, just a topic, such as murder of 35,000 plus people, but, you know, just a topic. With that being said, let us move directly into a very interesting video I've seen, and that is on our favorite Joe Boudin. Were they not in Israel? And it's called, Why Joe Boudin? Why Joe Boudin won't stop Israel? Well, the United States of America would have to invent an Israel to protect her interest in the region. If I were a Jew, I would be a Zionist. As a matter of fact, you don't have to be a Jew to be a Zionist. I have had the view for the past 24 years that the only way in which there'll be peace in the Middle East is when the Arab nations know there is no division between the United States and Israel. What my record? The 51st state of the United States. Always remember, the American support for the state of Israel has nothing to do with their support for the Jewish people. It is only a mechanism through which they can create an incredibly allied colony in the Middle East from which they can launch all sorts of operations while keeping their interests not only alive, but thriving in the territory. They literally just made a, they, they just made a colony. Like that's, that's Israel. They just made a colony. They made the 51st state of the United States in the Middle East. They could, they would have played on any sort of like fucking ethnic or religious story on why they were doing it. They, they could use uh, Syrians. They could use uh, Jews. They could use Saudis. They could use whatever. It, the, the opportunity presented itself during World War II. And because, you know, the, 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 the Jewish man did not have a homeland, quote unquote, in order for them to create the Zionist state of Israel only and exclusively because it could protect their interests, their imperial interests in the region for decades, if not centuries to come. That is the only reason why the United States so fervently supports Israel, because it's not supporting Israel, it's supporting itself. That is America 2.0, just a different flag and a slightly adjusted civil liberties uh, system. That's it. It has been, it has been unstinting in the defense and support of Israel. The United States has never and will never lose our resolve. Israel will never waver. Well, I'm never going to leave Israel. For the past six months, the images of a genocide out of Gaza have gripped the world. Raised neighborhood after raised neighborhood. Mass grave after mass grave. Mass slaughter after mass slaughter. Fathers carrying their children's body parts in plastic bags. Mothers screaming, looking for whatever remains of their families. Children left without limbs, without faces. What did these children do wrong? What crime did they commit to deserve tons of bombs on their heads? While the genocide of the Palestinians is carried out by the state and military of Israel, the United States, under the leadership of President Joe Biden, has played the role of its sponsor. The defense of Israel is still critical, so... Which, as we say on You Got Me Twitter all the time, the sponsor should be considered at all times as a direct participant in the conflict. It is insane liberal moralism for us to differentiate sending weapons, sending money, and sending intelligence to an army that is performing on the ground as not an act of war, okay? It is just uh, linguistical logistics at play there. The United States is actively participating in the genocide of the Palestinian people in Gaza by sending military equipment, funding, intelligence, and training to the IOF. There's no red line. We are not going to create any conditions on the support that we are giving Israel to defend itself. We will always be there by your exactly those the android nazis that were logistics officers were still nazis thank you side the united states strongly supports israel and its right to defend itself from hamas and that support is unwavering i wanted to ensure is that still the case that the administration has no red lines <laughs> that is still the case since October 7th, the United States government has provided billions in military aid to Israel and unwavering political and legal support, both domestically and internationally, in addition to direct military support. But as the Biden administration and the Democratic Party find themselves in a political crisis in the middle of an election year, there's been a specific media narrative shift on who's actually running the show. Nobody expects Prime Minister Netanyahu to do the things that must be done 
to break the cycle of violence. It's curious to me to see Netanyahu talk the way he does when he tried to interfere in American elections. We can go down the list of what Bibi Netanyahu has done to make Israel weaker, to make them open to that attack. This line isn't necessarily new, but it actively erases not only U.S. culpability in the genocide of Palestinians, but Joe Biden's own ideological support of it. And what and it removes the conversation about Israel by de facto being an apartheid state and that leading to the resistance of the Palestinian people, which have suffered under its grip for the last 60 years, just like any civil rights movement ever throughout history has done in opposition to a state which treats them as fifth class citizens. It removes this systematic analysis of cause and effect by saying, oh, no, it's just the current government that is doing this. If we only participate in a bit of a better electoralism or us as the United States, if we encourage a different sort of leader, Israel is going to be different. Well, it's just going to be a more fucking open minded, you know, Hitler light because it is the system on which a colonial project such as Israel is based on that is causing these atrocities, not the particular leadership that is also a kind of uh, son, a kind of offspring of that system that is currently in charge. This is an inherently liberal disease of not being able to understand state actors as actors of the domestic ideology, which is based on uh, how it was funded, the economic system locally, and the general political ideology of the particular system. That the liberal believes that Every election cycle, it is a battle of ideologies. And while it might be a battle of ideologies on topics which uh, can still exist inside of the vacuum of the system, the election will never be about potentially changing the system because that would be seen as a allegorical or literal uh, coup d'etat against the system itself. Therefore, elections in an apartheid state do not cha- can never change the fact that it's an apartheid state, just like elections inside of a capitalist structure cannot change the fact that it is a capitalist structure. But no, liberals just, you know, really love voting and think that that actually can bring uh, radical change. What his legacy should and will be. There's no apology. Yeah, Hitler might be replaced with Mussolini if things go lucky. Exactly. GDP made. None. Welcome to Backspace, where we look at how the story is told in the headlines, and then we think about how we can tell it a little differently. On March 18th, the Washington Post published this article, detailing how President Joe Biden had found himself deeply entangled in a war he does not want and that threatened to become a defining element of his tenure. The article, drawing from 20 interviews from administration officials and external advisors, reported that the Biden administration was well aware three weeks into Israel's bombardment of Gaza that civilian structures were being targeted and that there was no actual plan presented by the Israelis to defeat Hamas. All this while the administration was publicly giving Israel a carte blanche to do whatever it wanted in Gaza all while it approved more than 100 military arms sales. The article, however, relies on what has become a popular refrain from not just this administration, but also the Democratic Party. The idea that President Joe Biden, and thus the United States, is beholden to the whims of Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. Netanyahu, I think, made a huge mistake by making himself a partisan figure. Netanyahu's interest, in a way, politically speaking, is to prolong the war. And right now, that's a direct conflict with the Democrats and Joe Biden. What is the president of the United States to do with an ally like that? Israel has a prime minister now who is incapable unwilling and in many ways politically unable to articulate such a vision. Netanyahu is not listening to us. And uh, he's a part of a rather extremist project. The goals of President Biden and Prime Minister Netanyahu are fundamentally at odds. No more money to Netanyahu's war machine. Now, there are three problems with this framing. First, it reduces the blame of not just the genocide. Exactly what we said previously. I have not pre-watched, I, I swear to God. Yeah. Unfolding in Gaza, but also the occupation, system of apartheid, the land theft, ethnic cleansing to one person. Netanyahu. It furthers this idea that, hey, this is... It also pushes away uh, through the rhetoric of, hey, we're trying to make him stop, but he's a psycho that doesn't want to stop, and he's an ally, so we, you know, we can't slap him around. We're really sorry, but it's definitely not me, Nancy Pelosi, and me, Joe Biden, that are pushing this. It's our ally that is very strict and very radical on this particular topic, which is, you know, just a topic, such as murder of 35,000 plus people, but, you know, just a topic. In Israel, this isn't democratic Israel. This is Netanyahu. He's the problem. 
here. And so if Netanyahu is the problem, if he's gone, like Schumer alluded to, then, well, there is no issue. And we're back on track to a two-state solution status quo where there is actually only one state, Israel. This purposely erases not only 75 years of history, but also ignores what are core truths about Israel as a nation from the day it was founded, especially that there is no room for Palestinians and Palestinian self-determination. While Israeli polls find little support in Israel for Netanyahu himself, his government's genocidal war has continued to be overwhelmingly popular amongst Israeli Jews. Two-thirds oppose ending the occupation, two-thirds oppose aid reaching Palestinians in Gaza, and 80% believe that the suffering of Palestinians in Gaza shouldn't be taken into consideration over the course of the war. The second problem with the focus on Netanyahu there you go. That is a systematic problem, and a system creates a local ideology. The only way for this local ideology to be changed is for the system itself to be changed. Changing who is on top of this, who's like the main head of this hydra, only slightly moves the direction in which the hydra swims. You gotta get rid of all the heads. As the issue, you gotta get rid of the idea that the, the, a hydra state can exist in the first place. Is that it presents the United States as not only having no leverage on Israel, but also that the foreign policy of the world's most powerful country and military is being controlled by a small country that militarily depends on aid from it to survive. And you'd think that these folks would be a little bit more careful about the consequences of rolling out something that sounds a lot like a Israel controls America trope. And the third problem with reducing all of this, everything we have seen unfold for the last six months, especially to just Netanyahu's belligerence, is that it erases American direct culpability in this genocide, a genocide that would not be possible without the United States. It also requires that we ignore everything Biden himself is saying and has said and done for decades. Early on when I was a kid, I'd say, when I was a young senator, I'd say, if I were a Jew, I'd be a Zionist. I am a Zionist. Were I a Jew, I would be a Zionist. And my father pointed out to me, I did not need to be a Jew to be a Zionist. You need not be a Jew to be a Zionist. I'm a Zionist. Joe Biden is, inarguably, the most pro-Israel president in U.S. history. From his days as a senator to his tenure now as president, Biden has openly and repeatedly made his commitment to Israel as not just... And that for some reason is okay. That for some reason is okay. The leader of the most developed economy in the world, the only world military superpower as we know it today, at least for now, openly states that he believes in an apartheid regime of ethnic cleansing and colonization of the Palestinian people by the Zionist ideology and the Zionist movement. The president openly stating this. A country, but as a necessity, known. I don't think there's any senator who's ever done more fundraisers for APAC. You don't need to, like, you only need to listen to what they say. Like, you don't need this hardcore analysis or, like, why are they doing this? Why are they doing this? They're, they're telling you right in your face. They fucking love Zionism. We've gone around the country more for APAC. And while we know that the Israel lobby plays a massive political role in the United States in a bipartisan way, Biden has never really needed the lobby. By his own admission, the roots of his affinity for and belief in Israel started when he was a child, listening to his father extol the virtue and necessity of a Jewish state post-World War II. The miracle of Israel is Israel. It's Israel itself, the hope it inspires, the light it represents to the world. There's a infamous story about <laughs> Biden's zeal for Israel told by Menachem Begin, who was the sixth prime minister of Israel and the former uh, leader but of But this is completely ideologically in line with the American was... status quo. I mean, America is a state built on mass murder, genocide, and colonialization, and therefore it is only an ideological extension of the thought that America as such deserves to continue existing as a project to believe in the Zionist project because the Zionist project is a colonialist project and it is at the core uh, based on the same principles that the founding fathers of the United States have followed as well. Equal rights for the local population that we consider citizenry and everybody else can suck a dick. What I'm trying to say by what I said previously is that the, like the United States supporting Israel as such as it exists at the current moment is not like some big like anti-American thing that they're doing. Some big like, oh my God, this is 
goes against American values, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, the values of a society are defined by what it does, not necessarily what it believes. Israelis themselves, uh, especially state representatives of Israel, believe that they're the good guys. Fucking everybody believes, Putin believes he's the good guy, Xi Jinping believes he's the good guy, fucking, you know, Brazilian leadership believes they're good guys. Brazil mentioned, yeah, baby, uh, everybody believes that they're the good guys. I believe I'm a good guy. You believe you're a good guy. A fucking guy who does fucking sexual assault probably believes he's a good guy. That doesn't matter if you believe you're the good guy. It doesn't matter if you believe you're, you're morally more correct than the other side. What matters is what you actually do, how you frame morality by yourself. The United States has framed morality of power, where a colonizer gets to come, overtake, and at one point completely eliminate any memory of the previous inhabitants of a land, and that is how it has created the United States of America. Therefore, de facto, inside of the moral compass of an American politician, of an American patriot, of an American nationalist, Israel is basically doing the same thing. And therefore, if you believe in the morality of the United States as a concept, as a colonial project, you must de facto believe in Israel as a colonial project, because there's not a lot of difference. Responsible for some of the most notorious massacres in the 1948 ethnic cleansing of Palestinians. In 1982, as Israel was conducting a devastating aerial bombardment of Beirut, Begin met with a young Senator Joe Biden from Delaware. According to Begin, Biden applauded the Israeli aggression in Lebanon and said that he personally would have bombed more, even if it meant killing more women and children. For perspective, then U.S. President Ronald Reagan would go on to call Israel's actions in Lebanon a holocaust. Children are not avenged by the murder of other children. During his 36-year career as a senator, Biden became the top recipient to receive money from the Israel lobby, something he, as vice president, even boasted about at a dinner in front of more than 2,000 members of the American Jewish community in 2011. But Biden's commitment to Israel really came to a head and changed the course of American-Israeli relations when he became vice president in 2008. The presidency of Barack Obama marked a critical moment in U.S. history. He was seen as this fresh-faced future vision for a country that, after suffering the worst attack on its soil since World War II, had plunged itself into political and economic disaster. Two wars, a planet in peril, the worst financial crisis in a century. And the only thing I'm going to do about that is continue it. Hope, Obama, Obama, yeah, baby. But whilst Jones Addy, yes, Jones Addy. So much hope and change rested on the young senator's shoulders during his campaign, he was missing experience, especially in foreign policy. With relatively little foreign policy experience of your own, how will you rely on so many Clinton advisors and still deliver the kind of break from the past that you're promising voters? Well, the, uh, you know, I am. I want to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> the, the other fucking Satan in the room laughs. <laughs> Hillary, I'm lo Look at this wonderful, diverse group of Satans. <laughs> I'm sorry, Satan. Looking forward to you advising me as well. <laughs> and that's where Joe Biden came in, the senator from Delaware who was known as the foreign policy guy. Biden was the architect for President Obama's foreign policy, a foreign policy that, while focused on diplomacy, also expanded America's war footprint across the world. It was also a foreign policy that made Obama one of the most pro-Israel presidents in U.S. history. Despite Obama's well-known dislike of also then-Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and their tumultuous relationship, especially over the Iran deal, his presidency saw the relationship between Israel and the United States reach unprecedented heights, especially in military support. As almost a parting gift, the Obama administration left Israel with a $38 billion military aid package, the biggest in U.S. history. No president has done it. Uh, I mean, I know about this, but every time I get fucking reminded, man, every time I get reminded, dude, if, if any Balkan state received one tenth of that in arms, we would blow the living shit out of each other. And that is why nobody gives us that much free guns. But for some reason, giving that shit to Israel makes absolute fucking sense. Giving 10x of what would make us blow each other up to Israel makes absolute fucking sense. Maybe, maybe, just maybe, when you need to continuously funnel tens of billions of dollars towards a state's military uh, apparatus, maybe that should tell you that everybody fucking hates the shit out of it. 
And why does everybody hate the shit out of it? Because it's an insane apartheid colonial project that has no fucking business doing what it is currently doing. But no, we're going to ignore that and we're going to give them more money and more money and more money. And that unfortunately will be the inevitable downfall of Israel as we know it right now as an apartheid state because, I don't know, that, just to me, sounds insanely fucking unsustainable, okay? At one point, either the money runs out or the motivation runs out or the willingness for people to put up with it runs out. Well, you also don't have health care. <laughs> as much for Israel's security as President Obama. In a 2020 article for Jewish Currents, Peter Beinart noted that Vice President Biden actively and repeatedly shielded Netanyahu from any consequences and criticism from President Obama. Biden wanted Obama to show stronger support for Israel and its right to defend itself. Beinart, in his piece, ultimately argued that were he to be the Democratic nominee, Biden would set back any progress the Democrats may have made ideologically on defending the Israeli government. That Joe Biden is the most pro-Israel president that has ever existed. He was the most pro-Israel vice president that has ever existed and currently is the most pro-Israel president that has ever existed. Even before he was a president, politically, he was the most openly Zionist individual on planet Earth. Therefore, de facto, if you believe that your voting has fucking power and you are not a fucking Zionist, voting for him is absolutely fucking insane. OK, you are literally voting for the most Zionist president to ever fucking exist. How much more do you need for you to not consider fucking bloody in your hands and your mind by doing this? But no, 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 no. We will significantly improve things. Yeah. Rupture for we will push him left. We will push the fucking founder of the British fascist party further from uh, from Hitler. That that's that's what we're going to do. Many became evident in President Barack Obama. It's 1931, and we really got to vote for that one president that really constantly talks about how National Socialism has rebuilt Germany from the ground up and how he really fucks with that shit. We really want to vote. We really should vote for him while uh, being extremely against uh, the continuation of the hostilities in Gaza. That, 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 that really makes sense. That really, like, really makes sense like, ideologically. And from every fucking lens. No, that's called fucking schizophrenia, dude. A strikingly different approach to Israel and the United States' response to the October 7th attacks. And what is also true is that the occupation and what's happening to Palestinians is, is unbearable. All of us have complicis, are, are complicit to some degree. I look at this and I think back, what could I have done during my presidency to, to move this forward. And so what happened with Biden's presidency? What have the Palestinians gotten, the Israelis? The Donald J. Trump presidency was undoubtedly disastrous for Palestinians. It saw the expansion of settlements, the Abraham Accords, the move of the U.S. Embassy to Jerusalem, and the defunding of UNRWA. The Biden administration, having campaigned as the antidote to MAGA, did little to reverse much of the previous administration's extreme policies. Instead, it embraced most of them and set them as a new status quo until now. And how do you change the status quo in, even in electoral politics? It is when you say that on a particular matter you will not budge and when you create a segment of the electoral body that says on this particular topic we are not fucking budging or we're not voting for you. If you still vote for this guy as he is supporting what is going on on the ground, how the fuck do you think he will change his opinion on this particular subject? Which also disgusts me to call the mass murder of 35,000 people, out of which almost half are children, a subject, but you get my fucking point. Like, even with Voot Brain, I'm not shitting on Voot Brain in general, but even with Voot Brain, that makes no sense. You're not pushing anybody left. You're not pushing anybody against imperialism. You're not pushing anybody uh, against Netanyahu or against uh, Israeli apartheid and the system which it supports. You're not. You're not. You're literally telling them no matter what your foreign policy on Israel is, we will continue to support you. Therefore, again, even through the voot brain, it makes no fucking sense to do this. It makes like it's it's am I am I speaking into the void? Like, am I saying something stupid? Because this is supposed to be like the most fucking <laughs> obvious shit. Over the last six months, the Biden administration has created a new normal in the American occupation of Palestine, that of genocide. 
While the administration has spent those six months saying that they have some concerns, concerns about Israel's conduct, there is nothing this president and the administration Wait, that was a good have concerns about Israel's about Israel's conduct. That was a great edit. Those, that was about a great edit. Conduct, there is nothing this president and the administration have done to show that they have any other interest than the continuation of the genocide in Gaza. And they can't just throw that blame on Netanyahu. After all, was it Netanyahu who made Biden say that he saw with his own eyes beheaded Israeli babies? Was it Netanyahu who made Biden say that he has no notion that the Palestinians are telling the truth about their number of dead? Was it Netanyahu who made Biden flood arms into Israel, who made Biden and Blinken bypass Congress twice on emergency weapons sales to Israel, push for an $18 billion military aid package? Have every spokesperson of the administration get up in front of journalists and cover for Israel's documented and undeniable war crimes? And was it Netanyahu who made former Clinton advisor Aaron David Miller say in an interview with The New Yorker that Biden does not hold Palestinians as equals? to Israelis. It took one phone call from Biden to Netanyahu following the World Central Kitchen massacre to make Israel temporarily open up three aid corridors to allow food and medical supplies into North Gaza, which it has been starving for months. And we're supposed to believe this president is just paralyzed from doing anything to alleviate the suffering of Palestinians? Exactly. No, 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 no. If you care so passionately about what is happening in Gaza, voting for Biden is literally voting for Netanyahu. There's no fucking difference. There is no fucking difference. I'm sorry. Yes, Trump bad. Obviously, fucking Trump bad. But like, what, what do you want Biden to do for you to not consider him an active culprit in the mass murder of Palestinians? What, take a fucking AR and go to Gaza himself? You probably vote for him as well. You're like, oh my God, but but uh, Netanyahu really pushed him. You know, he was powerless. He, they said, oh, we're either allies or not. No. To stop this genocide? Really? The U.S. news coverage of Joe Biden's role in this genocide has to change. And that change begins with reckoning with the simple truth that Gaza is Joe Biden's genocide. <laughs> Machete! Biden's statements and the statements of any and all administration officials need to be seen in the context of both the history of the president and the current actions of this government. By refusing to do that, the basic contextual work, U.S. news media is doing propaganda for the Biden administration that allows them to shirk any and all culpability in this genocide. Newsrooms are also paving the way for the Biden administration's carte blanche to Israel to escalate the war into a regional one. But for the U.S. news media to have that reckoning, it needs to first reckon with the role it's played over six months in pushing lies and Israeli talking points that have made the case for the destruction and slaughter in Gaza. But that assumes that it would even want to. As we noted in our October episode, the U.S. media works to protect Israel, not hold. Of course, it doesn't want to. What we've seen from of U.S. Of course, news it doesn't want to. It gets money from fucking making guns for them. It gets a 51st state to represent their interests locally. The only problem they're having right now is if we're gonna lose votes based on this. But the liberals will say no, no, Chairman Joe, you're not gonna lose votes even as you're supporting mass murder. That's the only, the only bargain chip you voters have and you're like so willing to just give it up and be like no 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 other guy worse just, no wonder you never get fucking promoted at work no wonder you can't get a fucking girlfriend to stay with you you don't know how to fucking you don't know how to, you just sit there and take shit that, that's the type of person you are if you, that's how you think that's the type of person you are you're okay with being continuously cucked in everything in ideology in life in in work in absolutely everything i cannot respect you i cannot fucking respect you that is the complete and utter fucking lack of any sort of basic fucking human principles that you have you're 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 worse than a fucking npc at least an npc follows some sort of fucking code you have no code you have no code you're just fucking you're like a leaf blowing depending on where the fucking wind of the elephant pushes you into or the donkey or whatever the fuck it's 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 pathetic it's simplistic it's 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 weak it is weak you are weak 
newsroom since October 7th exponentially exceeds the level of propaganda we saw in the lead up to the U.S. invasion of you fucking disgust me Iraq. And when that is the order of the day, what future is there for this industry? When basic journalistic practices are not just simply forgotten, but viciously thrown to the side, what is the point of journalism? What does it become and where does it lead itself and others to? And if there is no moment of introspection, then it just ensures a continuation of propaganda that only worsens. Over 33,000 Palestinians have been killed in the Israeli-U.S. genocide, with over one-third of them being children. There's forced starvation. We've seen the entire healthcare system in Gaza burnt down as hospitals have become slaughterhouses. Mass graves, tens of thousands of amputations, widespread diseases, mass executions and disappearances, aid seekers gunned down. War crime after war crime. And while that is Joe US Biden's US. legacy, it is also the legacy of a news media that has refused to hold him, his government, and his closest ally accountable. Brilliant so much video. For watching. One of the absolutely best videos I've watched on the coverage of the relationship between the current presidency, the United States of America, and not to Israel, remember, and Israel. Incredible video. AJ Plus, I can't believe you made it. Bravo. Bravo, bravo, bravo. Respect to we know that Sana Saeed. Respect to Sana Saeed, uh, host, senior producer, and the writers the of this. This was absolutely fantastic. That was great fucking work. That was looking at the, the system behind it, looking at Joe Biden's uh, past, looking at his ideology as he presents it himself, looking at the power dynamics between Israel and the United States, looking at the difference between saying one thing and doing a completely different thing. Absolutely bravo, 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 pičku matinu, svaka čast. Svaka čast. Bravo, bravo, bravo. Let's continue on this topic with... Uh,